Hi guys, hope you all doing well and this will be the second video of the entire series that I will be creating for OAuth and in this video I'm going to talk about roles and client registration process. So if you talk about the traditional methods that we were using, we had client server model, client namely your application itself which is accessing a protected information on a particular server and again a set of users that will be using your application but in OAuth these terms are slightly changed because there are three new entities which you will be knowing now and that will be authorization server resource server and resource itself so resource is basically the core data the raw information which your application will be accessing that will be protected by a specific api and your application will be doing the necessary calls to get the particular access but if we talk about this or let's say with an example and i have a couple of users which is going to access or who are going to access a particular application and the primary task of this application will be accessing contact information now this information must be saved or must be protected by some of the entity and let's say that particular entity is this server and before your application can even access this information it requires an acknowledgement from a different server now if we start again now we will come to know how these roles are being divided in these five categories so the very first thing that you need is your application itself and your application will be known as client in OAuth your application is going to access a particular information and that is contact so that particular contact that raw information is named as resource since this is protected by a server it's called resource server and all this information which your application is going to access belong to users so users will be called resource owners and now the server which is actually going to approve or the server which is going to provide your application a particular information which your application will be using to access the particular resource is called authorization server so there are four roles in oauth application resource owners resource owners will be the users itself who will approve this request authorization server will provide your application a specific information a set of data which is commonly known as authorization code that your application will be using to access a particular resource resource will be the information which our application is going to access and resource server will be the server which is actually hosting this information now before your application could even request the access for any particular resource it needs an acknowledgement as i said from authorization server and for that you need to let the authorization server know what is your application and that's what we call the registration of client now when you are designing an application there must be some common attributes or there must be some common values likewise the name of the application and the sign in url in a similar way authorization server also needs some set of information to know your application so in this case let's say i have saved uh, a form in authorization server wherein i have filled in that my name uh, the name of the application is hr application and the sign in url is https application.com and the moment i will complete the registration process on authorization server itself authorization server will create a client id very specific to my application so that it could judge that yes this is a particular legitimate request which i have received from a known application and then the authorization server would be able to do any of the task likewise approving the request for any particular resource but again in oauth there are basically two client types and the first one is confidential and the other one is public the only difference between these two different client types is that when you will implement a model wherein your application needs to behave as a confidential client you will use one more attribute while sending every request to authorization server apart from client id 
and that will be client secret so if you have prior experience if you already know OAuth, or if you have configured any of the application you might be aware that every service provider is actually allowing you to create two different set of applications confidential and public and when you will try to use a client type confidential you have to use client id and client secret and apart from that this is the client type but there are client profiles as well likewise your application can be a web-based application a website or your application can, can be a native client application itself which will be installed on users machine but under the hood, your application must be using OAuth. So now let's talk about a quick summary of what all we discussed. So in this particular video, we talked about roles. We talked about registration process. We talked about client types and a couple of client profiles like web web-based application and your native client application in the next video i'm going to talk about endpoints and generic authorization flow so there are basically two endpoints the first one is authorize and the second one is token endpoint and apart from four flows which are defined in the rfc of oauth protocol there is a generic authorization flow that actually gives you the baseline about how OAuth has been designed to achieve four different flows. So thank you so much guys. Thanks for your time. If you have learned anything new, I would request you to please subscribe, like and do comment below regarding your feedback, suggestions so that I can improve the content that I'm showing in these videos. Thank you so much guys. Thanks for your time. Bye bye.